All right, today I'm going to be working on a Vi Air air compressor rebuild. When I bought my excursion, uh, this compressor was on it, but no matter how long I ran it, it would never build pressure. So I decided to take it apart. If it was already broken, I'm not going to do anything worse to it. Uh, but I did find there's rebuild kit options for this since there's some parts. Uh, but this is an older model. And look, this is a Vi Air 450C air compressor. Hooks out 150 psi. It's a 100% duty cycle, 1.66 cfm. But I'm gonna go through. I've already taken it apart, so I know what's wrong with it. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly undo everything and take it apart, so you can see the different components and the problems that we have with it. So it's gonna be a four millimeter or five thirty second Allen. Those are the ones that I have that fit. You're going to take the head off with these four long screws. So underneath the head there's what they call a saddle valve. This is going to be the exhaust portion. So This is the saddle valve, the exhaust valve, and you can see at one point they had had this head put on wrong, they would put it on backwards, and the screw head had hit the, the top, there wasn't enough clearance. There's actually a little drilled out portion of where that screw head is supposed to fit recessed in. So when they, at some point before, had taken this apart and reassembled it, they put that head on backwards. Um, you can see right now, for one, I'm missing the, the inlet valve on the piston. So, of course, I'm never going to build any compression. Uh, also, when you take this off, you can see the scoring that's all around the cylinder walls. So this isn't even smooth at all. It just looks dirty. It's actually rough like a cheese grater. And how that happened, is this seal, the piston seal, it was damaged. So the piston was scoring the top. So again, upper components, head, saddle valve, piston cylinder wall, and we'll take off this end. This is the air inlet. That's where your filter, filtered air is gonna come in. Another thing I noticed too when I was taking this out of the truck that this didn't have any uh, rubber cushion, rubber mounts, vibration isolators. So I got those also uh, as replacement parts and I'll be putting those on. So that'll help uh, isolate vibrations from the uh, compressor and the hard mount surface. So I'll do that later. This is the O-ring for the bottom of the cylinder wall. And this will just, end cap will come off really simply. So now we have our piston end. It's counterbalanced. And this piston will go up and down, air inlet through the valve, up into the head, past the exhaust valve, and then out to the compressor. So one thing with the new kit, that I got when I was searching for parts. The heads were apparently the same. It's really hard to find places that have the saddle valve um, and the valves themselves, the little reeds. Cylinder walls were pretty easy to come by. A lot of different places I can find those online. You can see how smooth that inside is. But what was different I kept finding from an older model via air to newer models, they changed the piston valve orientation, the inlet valve. So it's still got the counterweight on it. It's got a little bit of different piston design. But uh, 
what I noticed is just the orientation was different. So the valve went in line with the motor on the old models, while the newer models fix sideways. Well, remember on that saddle valve it has that recess in the head. So if we put the head back on the exact same orientation, that new location of the nut for the or the screw for the inlet valve is going to hit this. So I've already done some measurements. If I just rotate that head, it'll fit in that recess just fine. So instead of my air outlet facing along the linear plane of the, the compressor motor, I'm just going to have to rotate it 90 degrees to come off, which for my application will fit fine. So for the removal of this, there's a set screw in here, and it's probably going to be held on by Loctite, so you'll have to use a torch. I just used a little propane torch, heated it up, a little bit of lubricating fluid, try and get down in there, uh, the heat and the, fluid, the lubricating fluid to loosen that up. So I've already done that, so it's already loose. I'm just going to go ahead and take that out. All right, so this took a little bit of work too. So again, heat, uh, tapping, trying to break that uh, Loctite out. And then finally, it's like we, you'll get the chance. And that'll just come off of the shaft. You can see the set screw there. And you can see the flat edge for the motor where that set screw goes in. So what we'll end up doing putting some Loctite on this one, putting it on that flat, and then just reassemble. So. Let's get that on the shaft first. All right, now that we've got our piston back on the end, set screw is in, Loctite is in. We're going to put the end cap back on. Again, the piston's just going to go through the end, through that hole, and back in. We want to make sure that sealing surface, that O-ring, was nice and clean. And then put our feet on. I'll hold that end cap in place. All right. So this is where we're going to install cylinder wall. I'm going to lubricate this seal on the piston and the cylinder wall to try and keep it from gouging. So the trick is to go in at an angle sideways which will slowly compress the seal as it fits in and then once we're in and it's compressed, then we can rotate it on. You can see right here, the sides on this side and this side are compressed. It's at an angle, so it's allowing it to get in and get past that bottom edge.
All right. We want to make sure that the O-ring on the bottom of the cylinder wall is still in good position. The ceiling surface is clean. And there we're good. Okay, so now that we've got our cylinder head back on, pistons in, everything's checked there. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall our saddle valve. And remember, we want to make the orientation. We're going to have to change this because we're using an old saddle valve with the new style piston. So we want to make sure that recess in the head matches that screw. Next, same thing, the chambers for the exhaust valve. I want to make sure that, that chamber matches up. So we're going to put it right there. And then reinstall all four of your cylinder head bolts. Alright, I'll, I'll go through a proper torque sequence on all of the bolts when I'm done. But now that's reinstalled, I'm going to go ahead and add the vibration isolators that I picked up. These are also available from the retailers for Vire components. So you'll have to have the center brass um, bushing uh, taken out of the rubber so that way you can get that rubber head squeezed in through. So it's just like an Oreo. So now that you've got again that center section looks smaller you wouldn't be able to push that through with the brass center in place. So you've got to get that brass center out. And then again, just squeeze it. All right, so we got our vibration isolators in. We got our head back on. We got our new cylinder wall, new piston to replace. And again, remember, they do sell the old style and the new style. The reason I went with the newer style and then just rotated the head to accommodate so I didn't have to buy a new head saddle valve uh, to compensate for that rotation of the intake valve. Uh, everything still fits and works properly. Reason, a base thing, trying to be on a budget, it was about a $30 difference of the newer style to the older style just in the piston, and then depend upon the reseller, uh, much different prices for this. So uh, I got mine, the cylinder wall and new piston set for $65. Uh, otherwise, you're looking at 80 to 90 for the old piston, and then it was 35, 40, uh, up to 55 for the cylinder wall. Uh, head was again about 40 something. Saddle valve was really hard to come by. I only found were two resellers for that, and it was uh, almost $30 just in the saddle valve. And then if you need to, you can also replace if all you're missing is just the valve. You can purchase just replacement valves and or reeds, and those are about 25 bucks a piece. But so for me, instead of uh, about 140 dollars in replacement parts minimum, um, it was just 65 dollars for this new piston, new cylinder wall. Uh, so save a little bit there. So next thing I'll do is I'll get this thing wired up, and I'll get a pressure test on this thing and then we'll be back in business. So I was gonna do a pressure test. I'll wait until I get that on the truck, get it all mounted up uh, to do that. So I found a fun way that we can do this with a balloon.
I think we've got pressure. All right, appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them down below. Thanks.